Let's begin the new year with new motherboards. That's right, the new, younger B850 on this ROG Strix B850-A Wi-Fi. Okay, first up, this B850 chipset, how is it different? Compared to the beefier X870E and X870, the main difference for B850 is the loss of the two USB 4 ports that you find on the former board. Besides that, there's actually not many big changes, at least when I compare between the X870-A and this B850-A. But before we go on to the board, let's see what else we can find inside the box. You have the usual stuff. SATA cables, documents, stickers, M.2 rubber, extra M.2 Q latches, and this M.2 slide. This M.2 slide is useful, which I will mention to you why in the later half of this video. The Dash A boards are special because they are one of the only few white boards that you can find in the Exus lineup. But what's surprising is this B850-A actually looks more like the Intel ZA90-A instead of his brother, the X870-A. The left area with the rear I.O. features a more angular design rather than the curve on the X870-A. Even the iconic for those who dare phrase, it is shown visibly on the PCH heatsink like the ZA90-A compared to the X870-A. I guess ASUS is mixing up designs so that their bots don't look stale. Which you think is better? Have a fixed design for AMD or Intel? Or play each other up now and then? Let me know in the comments. Well, at least ASUS doesn't overdrop art, drawings or designs on these white bots, which in my opinion, actually look better than the higher-end black bots, if you know what I mean. Though this B850-A is not exactly a thick bot, it is an 8-layer PCB, it still has some weight to it because of all the features that you can find on this board. Okay, besides the design, I said earlier there's not much of a difference when you compare this to the X870-A. You can use your Ryzen 7000, 8000 or 9000 on these new boards. You can put up to 192 gigs of DDR5 RAM in these 4 slots. The RAM sticks can be either both ECC or not ecc and they can go up to 8800 mega transfers per second if you overclock them using AMD Expo or AEMP. I hope ASUS will drop right RAM slots one day so that this board will look a lot more complete. Unlike Intel's B760 and the upcoming B860, I think you can overclock your CPU on B850 boards. AMD's BIOS for B850 should contain the same overclocking settings as X870, which I will confirm with you later when I show you the BIOS. Well, at least the USB is different. You lose the USB 4 on this B850-A as well as every other B850 board, but at least for this board, comparing against the X870-A, you get the now classic Type-C 20GB port, 3 USB 10GB ports, Two of them are Type A and one of them is Type C. And this Type C port doesn't seem to have fast charge as compared to the X70 A. And you also trade three Type A 10 gig ports for two USB 2.0 ports. The front IO is the same. You have one Type C 10 gig header, one USB 5 gig header, and two USB 2.0 headers. I feel this is okay because there's still a lot of USB to go around, and I appreciate having two USB 2.0 headers at the front because of coolers such as the Tri-X Panorama 360. Okay, besides the USB ports, there are still the other standard ports such as HDMI and DP to allow you to use the onboard graphics from the AMD CPUs. You have your clear CMOS button, BIOS flashback button, and BIOS flashback port. The two attachments for the easy Wi-Fi antenna from ASUS so that you can run Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4 from this board. And lastly, this board also gives you two audio ports and one SPD port. So I did receive a comment saying that with just two audio ports, it will be difficult to run surround sound 5.1 or even 7.1 of these boards. So yes, we may probably face the same issue because you only have two audio ports on this motherboard. If you want to run more than, I think, two audio devices, you have to get a board with the standard five audio ports. Okay, and before I go on to the main area, let's take a look at what else you can find on this board. Starting with the two 8-pin CPU connectors, there's a nice silver heatsink for the VRMs. I'm not sure what's the power phase. Is it 14 plus 2? I'm not sure, gotta confirm with that. On the right, ASUS chose to put the CPU fan and AIO pump header together and separate the CPU optional fan header. Perhaps they want you to use more of their AIOs by making the cable management for the CPU fan and AIO much easier. There are three ARGB Gen 2 headers on this board, one over here and two on the bottom. And ASUS has kindly included a start button to power on this board without the need to connect the front I.O. or a case. You can easily pre-test this board and your other components first 
by using this button. And I think I can officially say we see the end of the Q code LED at least for this tier. There is no Q code LED here, only the four Q LED lights. Going down, that's the 24 pin to power the board. I have already mentioned about the front USB. This is the front panel I.O. There are four fan headers, one on the right, one on the center, and two on the left, which like the pump and CPU fan headers, I guess makes it a lot easier to connect and wire manage your exhaust and intake fans. The CMOS battery is also at a nice unblocked location, which makes it easy to remove and put it back in. The CPU over voltage header is here, and the Thunderbolt header is right here for a Thunderbolt expansion card. The T sensor is at the center, and we finish it with the COM debug header and the front audio headers here and here. Okay, now for the main area. This is a pretty nice design for M.2 heat sink. It is very easy to remove this M.2 heat shield. Push this lever down until you see the heat sink release and pull the heat sink away from you. It is a nice, well built heat sink, and I think it's one of the best looking I have seen so far on ASUS boards. This first M.2 slot for your main NVMe SSD is 5.0 x4. It's advertised to use a Q slide to lock your SSD in place, but somehow it came with a Q latch on default. If you want to use the spare Q slide, I believe you can easily insert here on this M.2 slot, or you can always stick with the default Q latch. These bottom three M.2 slots also run at a standard 4.0 x4 speeds. You can either put a 2280 or 2210 SSD in the second slot, but the last two slots only accept the 2280 SSD. One thing to note, this third M.2 slot will be disabled if you are to install a device such as a Thunderbolt expression card on this slot. This is a 4.0 x4 slot, and the one for your graphics card above runs at a standard 5.0 x16. I like that the bottom slot is white, unlike the RAM slots, and this full length slot is shielded better because it uses the same design to install and remove your graphics card. BIOS looks very similar to what you tech people are all familiar with. The easy pitch is pretty standard. You can see your CPU and RAM speeds, turn off and on expo, change the CPU and pump fan speeds via Q fan. The BIOS is by default already on the new 1080p HD mode. This makes the interface a lot brighter and clearer. You're also able to assess the ASUS BIOS Q dashboard on this page to tell you things like what you have installed, if you have turned on Expo, and also a good way to test if all of your USB ports on your board are working. As for the advanced mode, it's also the same. You can turn on AMD Expo for your RAM here. There are the standard various profiles to choose from. But there's also a new one called Gaming Config. I'm not sure if these are profiles from ASUS or AMD. I have to try it to know what they actually mean. Because you can overclock your AMD CPUs on B850 in general, ASUS has included the standard PBO options, where you can let the system overclock your CPU for you, or you can change the individual settings manually. If you want to adjust your F3 and F4 for different users, you can do so via ASUS My Hot Key. Okay, if you have not caught it, I have a Ryzen 7700X on this V850-A. So I did a simple benchmark on Cinebench 2024, and the 7700X gave a multi-core score of 1071 on the V850-A against a score of 1050 on the X870E board. I'm not going to say which X870 board this is because it's a different brand. <laughs> But you get my point. This is a difference of 20 points. I'm not very sure if I can see it's within the margin error, but it seems like it is because a difference of 20 points against a score of 1070 seems pretty minimal. So probably I can say it's within the margin error. I can kind of say that there shouldn't be a performance difference between a B8 board and the X8 board. However, for gameplay, on Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p high, the 7700X gave a score of 168 to the early 170s when you are driving down the road, and it dropped to the mid 140s during a firefight. On the X870E board, it gave a much higher FPS. You see the mid 175 to 180s when you are driving down the road, but you still see the same drops to the mid 140s during firefight. As for the prices, I do not have it yet because ASUS has not provided me with any information, but let's just do a simple guess as to how much this board may cost. 
Seeing that the current price for ROG Strix B680-A is 485 Singapore dollars, I hope that this B80-A will be cheaper or maybe around the same price as the B680-A when launched and definitely more affordable than the X870-A. The X870-A goes for 729 Singapore dollars now, which can be expensive for a nice mid to high end board like this. But I think ASUS will probably also price this B850-A similar to the B650-A at launch, which is about 280 US dollars or 380 plus Singapore dollars. If the board is priced at the same price range as the B650-A or even more affordable, that will be great. So I will update you when this board launches and when ASUS finally puts up the price for this motherboard. It is nice to see that we have a few more years at least for this AMD socket. You definitely can still run your Ryzen 7000 and 9000 CPUs on the B6 and this B8 as well as the X6 and the X8 motherboards. So there's still life for this AM5 socket and I'm sure this socket will still last a few more CPU generations. And if I'm able to get my hands on another Ryzen 9000 CPU, I will show you how it runs on this new motherboard. But in the meantime, like if you like this video and watch my review of the ASUS ROG Strix X870E-E. Happy New Year to all of you tech people again and catch you in the next video.